Hi there, welcome to Persephone's Temptations and today as our very first video, I would like to talk to you about candle safety. Hi, my name is Bee, and I am here to teach you a little bit about my business and within that I want to teach you how I make candles and the safety precautions that I take. So I just wanted to make this a brief video. It might be a little long, but I will have timestamps in the description down below. So that way you can go ahead and pick as to which one fits your needs. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we want to talk about is our area. So right now, before starting to film this video, I was working on some Christmas candles so my workspace is a little bit waxy, covered in glitter, and it's just not ideal. So I take out my handy dandy little container of Clorox wipes. So this one is the Great Value brand. I'm sure that you could find um, whichever one benefits you the best if you're just looking for something cheap. As long as they are sanitizing, they can clean your space from germs, they can clean your space from wax, they can clean your space from glitter. Trust me, glitter is really hard to get out. <laughs> but as long as they do the job, or even spraying your counter, if that's what works best for you, just ensure your space is as clean as possible. There are no flammables. And the reason why I say this is because it's very easy to look one way Say you gotta sneeze, say you gotta do something. It's very easy to take your eyes off your counter and a mishap or injury to happen. So it's very important that you keep your space clean and safe. So now that we got step one covered, what I also want to add on to this is that you always want to make sure that the area that you're working in is heat resistant. It is flat and safe for any candles to be on top of. And it is away from anything that may catch fire. So on top of that, we also want to take a look at what we are wearing. Ideally, short sleeves are not the best when you are in a work setting. So if for any reason, you were to have any mishap, something slips out of your hand, suddenly you get wax all over your arm, you want to have your arms covered from any heat damage. Perfect, so now these arms are covered up. The next thing we wanna take a look at is our apron to protect our clothing. So cool, we got our apron on. Now, what about your hair? My hair is in layers and it can easily drop any hair at any second. So I like to put something on my hair to keep it from completely flying hairs everywhere or having a hair on one of my candles because then that candle is no longer for anybody else. It's for me. <laughs> and I don't want that to happen. They also do sell hair nets in case you um in case you feel more comfortable with a hairnet i do have some hairnets that i use whenever i'm creating my soaps and other choices um another thing that is also great to have is masks a part of your uh, proper wear for when you're creating candles is having closed-toed shoes i can't stress that enough because you never know when a like i said before the wax is gonna like uh, melted wax is gonna just fall out of your hand and it's gonna land all over your feet the other thing that is great to mention is um, goggles keep your eyes protected i like to make little whip tops to my candles and when i am whipping wax it does kind of fly everywhere so to protect my eyes even further, I do like to wear goggles just to keep my eyes protected from that wax landed on my eyes. Landing on my eyes. Using containers that are 
only intended for candle use. So I use mainly a variety of these mason-like jars. They are straight-sided, so it makes it a little easier for my labels. They are thick enough to handle the heat of the wax and they are intended for canning or candles. So I always like to make sure that I am using jars intended for candles. So let me move those to the side as I have already spoken about those. I will share a link down below so that way you guys can go ahead and check those out for yourself. I buy them off of Amazon. So these guys are the embossed candles that I like to also use and they have their own little design for them and they glow from the inside so it's pretty cool. So that's my red one and this is the yellow one. They come in a variety of sizes. This is my 10 ounce jar one and it allows me to get very creative with how I want my candles to be presented. The other cool part is that the lids are so creative, they're very beautiful, that when somebody wants to reuse that jar, they have a pretty neat looking jar to have in their collection. My other favorite kind of container is these little tin four ounce jars. They have a matte finish all around and the inside has a golden glow. So I absolutely love these for little small four ounce gift candles. The only thing that I'm not very happy about tins is that when you're lighting a candle, they do tend to get very warm. So if anybody wants to move a candle while it's lit, it's gonna really hurt their hand. Now, one thing that everybody always mentions is to never use plastic when it comes to a candle making container. And the reason is because of the temperatures that the wax gets to when it's, um, when it's doing its, when it's doing its thing. But I really do like these plastic tea light, tea light containers. Luckily for tea lights, they don't get as hot as a regular candled wood they don't get as hot as a regular candle would. And they are very pretty and very great priced on candlescience.com. Now let's talk about other containers that you may see on the internet. You got your Christmas mugs, your wine glasses, <laughs> I don't understand this one, and your plastic containers. That's another one that really confuses me. Among popular videos online for five minute crafts, you will see different containers being used for candle making. Plastic ones that are thin are not the best choices as they can melt easily or be burned. Thin glass in wine bottles can easily shatter from the heat of the wax or even the heat of the flame Ceramic mugs can be ideal, but they are not intended for candle making, but they make really great choices for small gifts and uh, small creations. So with the jars that I like to use, I like to make sure that there are no cracks, no scratches, there are no dents or any weak spots in my glass before I intend to use them for candle making. An example of a cracked jar would be this. So I usually repurpose my jar if I cannot use it for candles. This one typically holds my chopsticks, my safety pins, or anything else that I would like to reuse it for. Or you can always contact the customer support and see if you can get a refund on your jars. And this is the part where we get to step four. Always know the wax that you're gonna be using. I tend to use Golden Brands 444 Soy Wax for all of my candles as it is a higher meltage point 
especially during the summers here in Arizona. This video is not sponsored by Candle Science, but we do really like all of their products, their soy wax, and all the information they have on their website for their items. When you are getting to know your wax that you will be using for your projects, it is best to know the different melt points, flash points, pour temperature, and how your wax affects your consumer. With soy wax, there are people that may be allergic to it, so it's always best to inform your consumer of what kind of wax you have and if it contains soy or not. My best recommendation for melting your wax is always using a double boiler, double boiler method as that will keep your wax from burning or reaching its flash point way too soon. There are other melters intended for wax that are a little bit more on the pricier side and I will insert a picture right in this video so that way you may see that and I will link down below. So now we are on point number five of candle making safety tips. Always know your fragrance oil. For fragrance oils, we like to use Candle Science for their clean scent guarantee and Brambleberry as they do have a lot of information on their website about what is inside of their oils, their lifespan, if they're safe for candles, soaps, and their flash points. It is really good to be familiar with the fragrance oils that you have and with their IFRA sheet, which stands for the International Fragrance Association. And they are an industry that represents the fragrance, fragrance industry worldwide and their safety. It is also good to be familiar with Prop 65 using fragrance oils it is not recommended to use plastic to measure out your oils as some oils do react with plastic and can melt right on through can melt right on through as part six of this safety video we would like to talk about wicks and your selection of wicks with your wax it's safe to know to always trim your wick to one eighth of an inch. If the wick is not trimmed to its appropriate height, it can cause a large flame and extreme suiting. You could also use a wick holder to keep your wicks in place until the wax fully sets. This keeps your wicks from moving or migrating and keeping them even within your candle to avoid any mishaps when lighting. Step number seven to ensuring that your candle making area is completely secured is to never leave your work unattended. Accidents can easily happen and never leave your workspace unattended unless you have completed your work, cleaned off, and there are no burning flames. Step number eight would be to always test your work. And that is actually our final step for the for this video today, you would like to always check your work and ensure that every candle is going to burn the right amount, it's going to be an even burn, and there are no hazardous flames within your product. I have put together our list up on our website, so if you are curious about looking back and don't want to go through the entire video again, we will have this available for you at Persephone's, LLC, Persephone's Temptations LLC.com. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and subscribe as the next video we will be talking about how to create your very first candle using our eight ounce little tumbler jars. Thank you so much. Go ahead and subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below if you believe I missed anything else and I'll go ahead and add it to our next video. Thank you so much. Bye.